Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'll be reviewing The Call of the Wild. So The Call of the Wild is a film based on the classic novel by Jack London. I feel like as kids, at least my generation, you always had to read, you know, White Fang or The Call of the Wild. It was one of those stories of, you know, the Yukon territories. You're learning about man or beast out there in the wilds of that area and it has it really captures that essence of it that's one thing i'll say that this movie does really well is it does put you in that setting and that time period the one thing about this movie that i really didn't love to be honest with you is that buck is a fully cg character the dog just it looks like a cg character it never makes you feel like it is an actual dog and i think as someone who grew up with films like homeward bound or beethoven or other movies where you had real dogs in the film you feel so much more connected with a real dog as someone who loves dogs like i do it's always fun to see a, like a dog it's cute it's enjoyable you connect with that just seeing a dog on screen is something that a lot of people enjoy but when it's animated i feel like it just takes something away from it and maybe it's because i come from a little bit older of a generation that's used to those movies like homeward bound and seeing something like this is just it doesn't have that same charm to it that being said i thought that buck is an interesting character but he is far more of a character than you would see in a movie like homeward bound where it's a voiceover of what a dog's thinking they're able to make it do things in more of a cartoon way and was more of a scooby-doo style character than a real dog and at times that is funny and it's heartwarming and it's endearing and seeing his interactions with the people that he comes across, the, the animals, the landscape that he's coming across, you're able to get more of an emotion from him than maybe just a voiceover of a normal dog. Harrison Ford isn't really in this movie as much as you would think he would be from the marking and everything. I don't think that hurts the movie to a great degree because I do think it's able to follow Buck and his journey and that's compelling enough. But I did like the moments that they are finally together at times and having that connection between dog and man, that relationship, that kind of symbiotic thing that you can get from, you know, a man out in the wild with a companion. So I thought the moments they had on screen were few and far between compared to what I thought it would be, but it worked and it wasn't necessarily a huge detriment, but I think a lot of people might be disappointed if they're going into it expecting a ton of Harrison Ford. Obviously is a classic story. It's a classic tale. I think a lot of people know about it. A lot of people kind of have a general idea of what's going to happen in this kind of movie. And it works, you know, it's obviously been around forever. There's a reason why it's a classic story. So the plot was fine. I thought the characters were something interesting. Like I said, Buck being more of a cartoonish dog than a real dog is a detriment to me. Maybe not for general audiences. Maybe young kids will really enjoy the goofiness, zaniness of a dog that's far more expressive and moves a lot more like an animated character than a real dog. Just the heartwarming general nature of the movie is something that people might enjoy going to check it out this time of year. There's obviously not a ton of really hard hitting movies that come out in January, February. So it's definitely worth checking out if you have kids that would enjoy seeing a movie about a dog or you want to see this classic tale or, or maybe have it matched up with reading the book or another Jack London book. But I think yeah, it's just an average film. So if I were to rate the movie, I would give it a six out of 10. Not the worst thing I've seen in the world, not the best thing I've seen in the world. Actually a little bit better than I thought it was going to be from the trailers because just that CG dog is something I couldn't get past in the trailers. I really was just like, this is going to look so weird. It's going to be so awkward. But when you're able to kind of lull into the concept that it is a fully CG dog and it's going to be a little different than seeing something like Homeward Bound and you're not going to be like a stuffy old person like me when you go see it. It's definitely able to enjoy some things about it. The messaging, the relationships, and just the general warm, fuzzy tone of it. So let me know what you thought about The Call of the Wild. If you saw it, if you read the book, how'd you feel about it compared to the film? And I'm kind of interested to see what you guys like. Do you like that it's a fully CG character? Or do you like a Homeward Bound style while it's just a dog and they kind of voice over it? Or maybe you like the blending of the two, like Lady and the Tramp that we saw earlier in the year. I thought that was an interesting combination of having real dogs, but you like CG the mouth to make it look a little more emotive and a little more expressive so let me know down below how you feel about that i think it's kind of an interesting concept where we would go with this in hollywood because you know we've had some controversies in the past with using dogs in shooting and then you're having the current thing with going to cg so kind of where that falls in that spectrum i think it's a kind of an interesting conversation so again thanks for watching remember to like and subscribe and see you next time